Yeah, we should be good to go. Excellent. Well, welcome to our second Meet the Candidate session for the 2013 at-large Board of Director seats for the Drupal Association. I'm Holly Ross. I'm the Executive Director over at the Drupal Association, and I'm really excited to moderate today's convening. It's really fun to talk to folks about why they're so passionate about Drupal and, and how they want to make a change. So I want to thank everyone for being here and give you a few notes about how things will work today. So first of all, if you are not a candidate, you are on mute right now, and that helps us keep the background noise to a minimum. Uh, if you are a candidate, you might want to avoid making a smoothie while we do this, just as a reminder. Um, but that does not mean that we don't want to hear from folks who are listening in. Uh, in fact, just the opposite. So you know, we want you to ask a lot of questions throughout the process today. You'll note that you have a questions module in your little uh, panel. Uh, feel free to use that throughout the session today to share the questions that you have for candidates. Um, and you can ask a question of all the candidates, or if you want, you can direct a question of a particular candidate. Uh, just be sure to note that in your question, and I'll be sharing your questions with candidates when we get to the Q&A section. So that's how to ask questions. Uh, a couple of notes about how the format will work. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is hear statements from the candidates. And while they're speaking, I'll go ahead and share their profile on the screen. Other than that, there's really no video to today's session. So if you see the web page up for a very long time and it's not moving, that's fine. Things are not broken. Just want <laughs> to point that out. Um, and when all the candidate statements are complete, we will switch to the question and answer format. Again, I'll share your questions. We're going to give candidates a minute or so to answer uh, so we can keep things moving along. I uh, also want to note that we are recording the session today. So if you miss anything or want to share this with colleagues, we'll have that available to you. If the technology gods could please bless me one time this week, uh, we'll have that available to you uh, this evening. And uh, I'll be updating the Meet the Candidates blog posts with uh, the recording and with the transcript when it's ready. So special shout out to Steph El Hajj for typing like a maniac today in IRC, which reminds me, uh, you can also uh, hang out there in the Drupal Association chat room on IRC, Drupal hyphen association. Last, uh, last thing about candidates, just a reminder that your interactions don't have to end here today. We're going to keep the Meet the Candidates pages up for the next couple of days for your questions and answers. So go to association.drupal.org forward slash nominations. You can see the list of candidates. You should see them there now. Uh, you can click through to individual candidates, ask them questions, see what they have to say. Uh, and then we're going to open voting on Sunday. So look for that. Um, I'm not going to specify a time, but some point on Sunday, it will open. Wherever you are in the world, <laughs> it will open. Uh, so please do vote and encourage your fellow community members to do the same. And I think that's the end of the housekeeping. So let's meet the candidates uh, that we have with us here today. Uh, we have uh, Morton. Morton, I still don't have any clue how to say your last name, so I keep calling you Morton DK. I hope you can live with that. Uh, Morton, uh, Pedja, uh, Eugenio, we have two Matthews, Matthew Saunders and Matthew Tift with us, uh, and hopefully we'll have a Jared Smith at some point, because I can see him on the line. Uh, so we're going to start with candidate statements, uh, so I will turn things over to you, Morton. And Morton, I just want you to know that you, I cannot hear you. I don't know if you muted yourself. Okay. <laughs> yep, that's right, Morton, I cannot hear you. Any of the other candidates you want to hop in and make sure that um, I can hear you? Hey, this is Jared Smith. Can you hear me? Ah, Jared, we do hear you now. Excellent. Matthew Tift, can I still hear you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. 
Morton, it might just be you. You may want to try to reconnect, uh, and let's just move forward to Pedja. Hopefully, Pedja, I can still hear you since we finally got that working. Good times. This is all going very well. <laughs> what about Eugenio? Eugenio, can I? Can you? Uh, can you speak? I think you're muted right now, but I can try. Do you hear me? Great. Let's start with Eugenio, and I will. Uh, I'll help Morton and uh, and Peja see if they can reconnect. Okay. Thanks, so, Peja. Hi. Hi, everybody. My name is Eugenio. I'm from Italy. I work in a Drupal shop uh, at enterprise level. I'm uh, involved with the community for about uh, three years, and uh, I do like communities, and I do like active communities such as Drupal One. And uh, I would want uh, more involvement uh, in some uh, minor community, such probably the Italian one is not so active as I, I would wish. And uh, my joining is a way to, to try to, to support this and to, to change these kind of things. And this is more introduction. I, I would prefer more questions and answers so uh, we can confront. Great. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks so much. Uh, Matthew Saunders, are you still on the line? I see you there. All right. What about Matthew Tift? I'm here. All right. We're going to move on to you while we sort out what's going on with everyone else. Sure. Well, my name is Matthew Tift. I live in Minnesota, uh, in the Twin Cities in the United States. I work for uh, Wisconsin Public Radio, which is in a neighboring state. Um, and I have uh, been um, a developer at Wisconsin Public Radio for the past seven years or so. And I helped to lead the effort to relaunch all of WPR's, or Wisconsin Public Radio's web properties on Drupal. I am also uh, fairly active in the Drupal community, um, in, especially in uh, the public media area, uh, in Drupal Camp Twin Cities, and uh, I recently I have been doing a lot more uh, contributions to Core, and I'm currently one of the co-maintainers for the Drupal 8's new configuration system. Um, I am very um, interested in helping to uh, support the board and its mission, and to uh, help with the uh, help support where the community wants to go with Drupal.org, help promote promoting events. I've been very involved with the Twin Cities Drupal Camp, so I know as an event organizer um, some of the challenges there, and I think there's some opportunities for the association to continue in its support. It's already very helpful. I know um, providing, for example. Um, uh, economic uh, channels for camps to to collect money and uh, I think there's just um, a, a few more things uh, in a few more ways that the uh, association could help uh, promote that among camps because I know some other camps weren't aware of those types of things so um, I think there's all kinds of things that um, I'd like to help out with and support um, many of the current initiatives with the Drupal Association I think are great so I think in in um, in some some extent I'm just uh, very interested in helping do more with them and doing more of the great things that they've been doing fantastic thanks Matthew sure all right I'm gonna try this now hey Morton are you there I should be there all right okay. all right Morton cool. tell us about yourself Okay, well, um, I've been, uh, my name's Morton. I've been in the Drupal community since uh, 4.7, which is about seven years now. I'm the current, I've uh, been on the board for the last year. I'm the current chairman of the uh, Danish Drupal community, which um, we can see by the last, uh, at the, uh, the Drupal conference in Prague this year, we look to be actually the biggest community now in the world, based per person, per country size, which we, of course, take great pride in. Um, so the last year I've been sitting on the Drupal board, uh, Drupal Association board, and that's been a 
tried up a right. It's been, um, I think it's gone tight from, from uh, very complicated to being coming very easy. And I was kind of feeling that my mission last year is, is, is almost done. It's still, I'm still missing the last couple of things that I set out to do last year. Um, and as, as key points of getting a more international focus, uh, building up a chart organization around Google association um you know uh and make sure that the communication gets gets way better um at the board and and also become still keeping this uh deep contact with our roots which i think is in the community um which of course is a very easy word to use because so basically everybody who works with google is in the community but that that also means to having your, your kind of having a contact network a lot around the world all the time and that's the, the thing i've been blessed with last year to be able to do so um my my mission kind of for the next year is is to to keep on pushing for this more international focus and keep on pushing for for getting a chart organization built around the google association um i do hope that we can at the same time build up this whole uh, helping uh, helping um helping tools for google camps around the world so new people coming in who's not like you know, uh, me and probably the rest of the of us who's running for the board now have done camps a ton of times. There are new people coming in. How do we make sure that they get easier tools to work with? Um, and that's kind of one of the things I hope we can do. Uh, and also keeping this community focus where uh, I've been kind of blessed this time to be so so deep into the board and knowing so many people that I've actually been able to to build up the uh, the community summit, which is going to be up next week at, at the DrupalCon before DrupalCon, and and that's the thing I really look forward to, is to actually be able to work on these community things that we all talk about. But let's face it, when we do bigger conferences, those kind of get forgotten, and and that's a format that we have at the Drupal Association have had the guts to change this year, and and I hope for more of those kind of things in the future. So. Um, my my main reason I, I want to run is to actually get my job, to get the job I promised to do last year, to get that done. Uh, one year was not enough for me to, uh, in my mind, revolutionize an organization. So it, I kind of need a year more, and then I should be done. Um, so I think that's kind of it. Awesome. Thanks, Morton. Okay. Oh, you're Let's welcome. See. Let's see who looks connected here. Hey, Jared, why don't we, why don't we try to talk with you? Let's see if this works. All right, Jared, looks like you are muted. Uh, I'm muted, I think. There you go. And uh, you may want to get really close to your mic. OK, can you hear me better now? Perfect. So uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jared Smith. I'm, a, I'm an open source geek. Uh, I currently work for Bluehost, a web host company. And I've had a long history of involvement with uh, open source communities. Um, you know, obviously, I'm involved in the Drupal community, but uh, I've been involved in the Fedora project. I was a Fedora project leader a few years ago, as well as the uh, community relations manager for the Ask Voice, Voice of IT project. Um, my motivation for, for wanting to join the board is, is to really help grow the Drupal community. Um, I've had a lot of experience in, in helping to grow and foster different open source communities over the last seven or eight years, and I want to. Um, Take my expertise and apply it to the to the Drupal community as well. Um, you know, I've, I've taken part in, in some of the Drupal cons, and attended some of the Drupal camps. I'm giving a keynote at Drupal Camp Guatemala beginning of next month, and and really I want to focus on you know, how do we how do we keep up? How do we make sure that the, the development community keeps up with the growth of the user community? How do we make sure that uh, developers don't get burned out if they're you know, doing their best to try to make Drupal the new best DNS in the world? How do, we, how do we grow the governance so that it's a help and not a hindrance to, to our future and those sorts of things? So I'm excited to be uh, actively involved in the Drupal community and help to make it better. Thanks, Jared. Appreciate that. Sounds like you might be somewhere doing something for Drupal right now. All right. And let's see if we can get Matthew Saunders going. Here we go. And Matthew, are you there? Oh, so close. I thought we had you that time. I cannot hear you. I don't know if you have a mute button somewhere, Matthew. Can you hear me? Aha! Success. You can hear me? Yep. Yes? Yeah. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Matthew Saunders, 
and I'm the Director of Client Services at Atten Design Group. Um, I've been working in and around and with the nonprofit sector since about 1995. Um, this has included board work on both sides of the, of the aisle, so to speak, uh, both uh, as an employee of, uh, of nonprofit organizations, but also um, on a couple of, uh, of boards. Um, I've been working in the technology space since about 1999. And I've been working with Drupal. I entered the Drupal community uh, on or around 2007. I think the first uh, con that I went to was uh, was uh, in Barcelona. And in fact, that's where I met Morton. Uh, he was one of the first people that uh, that I met in the community, and it was uh, it was quite a quite a, uh, a colorful experience and a whole lot of fun. It really made me feel uh, welcome. Um, I'm a process geek. I'm not a coder. I'm I'm not a developer. I'm not a themer. Um, I've made my living uh, around uh, looking at processes, project, project, and process management, and uh, and I've uh, engaged those uh, those tools in uh, a lot of different projects, ranging from small projects in boutique shops to uh, working um, as the uh, as the lead manager um, in the migration of uh, Examiner.com from Cold Fusion to Drupal Seven. Um, I've been in deeply involved in the community almost from the get-go. Um, I've been helping organize Drupal camps in Colorado since the second one, which had 13 people in it. I think uh, uh, we apex somewhere around 400 um, uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, I've presented at many, many camps and cons, including doing keynote, uh, a keynote for, uh, for Drupal Camp Austin. And I was one of the organizers uh, for, for Drupal, DrupalCon uh, Denver. Um, my motivations behind behind wanting to to pitch in with the association is simply that the community embraced me in two, 2007 and it's fed me not just not just from a from a financial standpoint but from a personal standpoint some of my deepest connections and uh, and deep, deepest uh, um, um, relationships have have uh, have come from this community and every single time I've needed something from the community it's pulled through and uh, and and provided for me and I'm unbelievably grateful for that um, so I've spent the last six years giving and receiving but I feel like I've received more than I've given and I want to give back more so last year when the uh, when the uh, uh, board announcements came up. I, I ran, as uh, as many people um, know, and uh, um, I was asked uh, in back channels whether I'd uh, consider running again, and uh, and I was happy to do so. And part of the reason that I think that I'd be helpful is that I've got board experience. Um, I'm currently on a nonprofit board, similar size to the association, um, and uh, and I've got uh, uh, deep roots in the community. Um, I've got the academic training to support this kind of work. Um, my uh, my uh, uh, two of my my professional professional degrees are in uh, are in uh, organizational management of nonprofits. Um, and I think the most important uh, aspect of this is that my my deep affection for the people that constitute Dru the Drupal community really, really becomes a, a lens for how I, I would view um, participating on the board. Um, my, my main focus, if, uh, if I'm elected, will be good governance to begin with um, and uh, looking at, uh, at uh, supporting the association um, and Holly specifically. Um, through through the uh, through the uh, um, art of good governance, and um, as I as I get my uh, get my uh, uh, my um, balance, so to speak, what I would like to do is start looking at uh, at youth a little bit more, and uh, and how we continue to how we continue to um, bring bring young people into the community. Uh, because open source projects like ours often can suffer from what's the equivalent of HR attrition. And uh, attrition can kill um, an organization, it can kill a project, it can kill a community. So I think that it's going to be really important for us to be looking at people who are younger, bringing them in and helping them um, achieve the, uh, the, the, the skills that they need to be leaders in our community moving forward.
So thank you very much for allowing me time to, to comment. I appreciate it. Looking forward to the rest of the conversation. Thanks. And are, do, you, do you prefer Matthew or Matt? Matthew, please. Okay. All right. Excellent. Now we have one more candidate on the line, Pedja, but we are just having a terrible time getting Pedja connected to the audio. Um, Pedja, what I'd like to invite you to do uh, now uh, is to uh, include your candidate statement in the IRC channel. Uh, and we'll hopefully we'll keep working on the audio and we'll get you connected and you can participate in the Q&A. But I, I don't want to miss your candidate statement. So if you can include it in the IRC channel, we can make sure that we get that included in the summaries that go up. Uh, so thanks to the candidates for their statements. We're going to move over into the Q&A section. So this is a reminder for all the folks that are connected to the call right now that you can participate now by asking questions of the candidates. You should have a question section in your control panel for the meeting. So you can type your questions right in there. Um, but I will start out with a question for all the candidates. Um, and you guys should feel free to jump in in whatever order makes sense. So see if we get your muting stuff worked out here. Uh, so here's a question, which is, what do you want to see more of from the Drupal Association? And what would you like to see less of from the Drupal Association? Um, this is Matthew Saunders. Um, I'd like to see um, the DA continue its outreach efforts. Um, I, I feel like we're starting to really, uh, really um, have, uh, have a sense that that's gaining traction. People are getting better, better, uh, uh, they're, they're understanding what the DA is about a little bit more, and I think that people are starting to um, make use of DA um, resources a bit better for things like camps and so forth. Uh, again, I think that uh, I've, I've mentioned uh, youth. I'd like to see the DA uh, really uh, be reaching out to younger people um, so those younger people in the community can take up a mantle of leadership ultimately. I don't want there to be sort of this hole where we've got young people who aren't ready to take on leadership and, uh, and sort of the old guard that, uh, that uh, um, are, are uh, leaving through attrition or, or, or whatever other reason. Um, I think the DA should be looking to strengthen the Drupal brand. Um, brand, is, brand recognition is a form of currency that we can capitalize on. So even as we see Drupal being adopted by um, uh, you know, bloggers all the way up to governments, Okay, I can't hear anything now. Am I the only one? I hear I can't hear him either. Hello. Bum, 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 bum. No audio whatsoever. Yeah. It seems that we lost Hi guys. Saunders and Holly. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I was muted. I was talking to myself here in my kitchen. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, we did lose Matthew's audio. It looks like we got him to reconnect. Let's give him, let me get one second here. And Matthew? Are you there? Hi. All right. We, we lost you for a second there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Why don't you finish up your thought? Uh, where did my thought drop? <laughs> oh, I already got that door. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Martin. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> uh, I think you were talking about reaching out to, to newer, to, to younger programmers. Um, not just programmers. I think mm -hmm. it's important for us to to, uh, to widen that squat. I think that we should be looking at, at not just programmers, but but also uh, project managers and and uh, and uh, uh, people who are who are more fit, focused on business. Um, you know, this comes from a guy that isn't a programmer, so mm -hmm. um, you know that 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 brings a that brings a different uh, a different perspective, I think. But um, I think that it's uh, it's really important for us to to widen uh, the base of people who are supporting Drupal and really try to uh, try to. Um, I I think I, 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 distance is the wrong word, but I think that be highly inclusive of people 
of professionals who are engaged in the use of Drupal and are engaged in the community who aren't necessarily necessarily programmers. Not that there's anything wrong with being a programmer. Um, I, I couldn't do my job without uh, with uh, without that portion of the community for sure. Great. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Great. I'm. I think that we actually have Pedja on the line now. Hello. Brilliant. <laughs> Great. After switching four offices, I finally get one that wants to connect me every thirty seconds. <laughs> well, I really appreciate your uh, valiant effort there. Do you want to share a little bit about yourself and then maybe answer the question? Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Pedja Grujic. I'm a director of technology at New Target. Uh, Washington, D.C. based open source shop. Uh, our CMS of choice, which uh, is Drupal, and we work with a variety of clients, including governments, nonprofits, associations, as well as small businesses. Uh, my primary focus for running for a DA board is to strengthen the quality and the size of the Drupal community, uh, from themer to developer to designer and beyond, because these are the guys who keep the community going as well as the project going strong and taking over more and more of the market share. I've been working uh, with my colleagues here at New Target to bring growth to the Drupal community locally by seeking out DC area colleges, uh, community colleges, universities to find in interns uh, in a computer science or IT related field and expose them not only to Drupal but open source community at large. Um, I want to bring these ideas and programs implemented with success at New Target to the Drupal Association to contribute what work and what doesn't. My plan is to explore this initiative in partnership with colleges and universities to introduce more and more students to Drupal and open source communities. One of the biggest challenges that currently is facing Drupal community is the number of skilled developers and a limited talent pool. Uh, I just read uh, like two days ago a post by Dries, and he basically points out the same thing, which is the basis of me running, that the biggest challenge is facing Drupal currently is that organizations of all sizes can't find Drupal talent. Now, that being the biggest uh, problem, it's not you know, don't get me wrong, it's, it's a good problem to have. It means that, you know, Drupal project community are growing at a great pace and we're taking up more and more of the market. But we need to increase the supply to meet the higher demand of uh, Drupal de developers, site builders and themers. My primary focus would be to expand the reach of the Drupal project by growing those programs which help new users get involved and learn Drupal. Uh, I believe that my unique blend of business strategy and technical vision, together with how close I am to the code and actual development efforts in Drupal, will be a valuable asset to the strategic direction of the Drupal Association. The uh, association does a great job promoting Drupal, and I, I believe that is one of the reasons Drupal has become such a strong player among other uh, platforms. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, and I hope we can work together to strengthen Drupal project and the community. Brilliant. Thank you, Peja. And, and do you want to say a little bit about what you might want to see more of from the Drupal Association and, and, and uh, less of? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, as the basis, what I would like to see more is more, uh, not to say recruiting, but more promotion of, you know, because you always hear people like, for example, I'll use uh, some WordPress developers and we convert those quite often to Drupal. There's a that Drupal is so hard to learn, you know, and, and I've actually met developers who, you know, don't even realize that WordPress and Drupal are built on the same language. So I think what I'd like to see more is kind of, you know, uh, bridging that gap between, you know, uh, other open source project developers and Drupal to bring them on board, which I think we're, we're going to be doing more and more with Drupal 8. Um, so I think that would be a uh, big push that I would initiate is to kind of open up Drupal for everybody and it's not just specific to people who already work with Drupal. Great. Thanks, Pedja. <clears throat> who else has something to share on that question? Oh, I always have something to say. Should <laughs> I say it on? It's Morton. Um, 
So uh, I think that the most important thing for the DA for the next year is actually to make um, to look at the tools that we are providing for our developers and for the for the whole community to work with. And that means that that D O needs a ton of love. And uh, if we don't gotta get that done, we're gonna be in major problems within a year. Uh, we've seen that the whole last year of not being able to upgrade our own site, uh, not getting on speed with tools. We have a whole bunch of people now who scream to us to move to GitHub. I'm not, I don't, right now I don't have a direct opinion on that, but I do know as being a front-end developer that the tools that we have right now is not as sexy as they could be. Uh, there's a lot of things on DLO that could be better, and if that doesn't get better, we will be in, in trouble. So for, from my perspective, there's no doubt that that should be our top priority for the next year. Um, the next thing I would, uh, I'm going to bang the balls in for the, the DA, either I'm on the board or not, is actually to provide more help and more uh, more tools for people doing camps and events, um, whatever it's uh, major uh, events like Front End United or Shooting Death Days or, or what have you, or it's, it's small meetups, because um, the strength of Drupal is not built on business, it's not built on the code, it's built on the people who comes in. And and that's kind of, it's kind of a paradox, or it, it's a nice paradox that we have this kind of hippie go go lucky feeling on one side that makes everything go around, and we have an ice cold business on the other side that brings in the money, and that's kind of the synergy that we have been growing on, and I think that's the synergy we will keep growing on. But um, there's no doubt that we need to think about what are we going to do in the future because well, none of us is getting. We need, of course, we need more blog. We need more developers in. We need new fresh perspectives and. Um, and for that is kind of where do we get these people in? And if we don't have the good tools for people to develop in, and we don't have a good place where people can start out by learning Drupal, and you know, as me and many others have, have, have learned from these Drupal events, that was kind of where we got hooked in because you had that community feeling, you had that feeling of actually being with a bunch of geeks who all wanted to build this amazing thing, and also oh, have a good time with it and. If you're long enough to get this by it, then it's even better. Um, and that's kind of the thing that we need to keep, I think we need to keep on. Uh, the business part and those things, I think, will come by itself because, well, you know, where the money is, the, the business will go. Uh, I should believe that the DA's most important role for the next year is to make sure our developers has the best tools they can get so we can get DA out the door and, and DLO can be a place where we actually I know, can find stuff and love to be um, and not get frustrated over the dumb things. So that's kind of me. That's kind of my two top priorities. Brilliant. Jared or Matthew Tift or Eugenio. Quickly, this is Jared. No, hey, uh, just a couple of quick things. I think uh, the one thing I would love to see that Drupal Association do. Is, is help make sure that we have lots of events around the world and not just in North America and Western Europe. I try to find a way to make uh, events work in, in other parts of the world for, for maybe, maybe a little harder to, from a, from a process standpoint to, to pull off an event, but where we really need to reach out to emerging markets and, and help to make a little less discretionary income to be able to travel around the world to attend an event. Um, and I know that that's a big challenge, but it's something that's that kind of like a fun challenge to try to tackle. Um, and, yeah, and I I'll just uh, also highlight what Mark talked about with, with the people that work you know, inside. It, you know, I think we all uh, love what it does and, and want to make it better and, and, and help that to continue to grow and be a great tool for, for the developers and the end users to be, able to be more efficient with that. Great. Thanks, Jared. Matt Tift, I want to make sure you're still with us. Yes, I am. Great. And I guess I, the way I would answer that question is, I, I think one of the, the main things I would like to see the Drupal Association do is to continue to grow its membership. And I think there are lots of tools available that maybe aren't being um, taken advantage of right now. So uh, for example, I think the way that people uh, can, be, you know, become a member of the Drupal Association, I think that, for example, that that process, like the default process for that, would be to maybe to become a sustaining member. And other nonprofit organizations have found that to be a successful um, 
tool where where rather than the default being I'm going to become a member for one year, the default is I'm going to become a member until I want to stop becoming a member and maybe transform people to you know giving a small amount every month or something like that. So I, I, I am sure these types of conversations are going on, but those are the kinds of questions I would like to ask and, and find out if there's more that we could do. Um, just things on the website about, for example, you know, why, do, why, why is the button green to become a member? Have other colors been tested? Why is it placed in that place on the website? Because I think um, these types of, of sort of targeted marketing to help people become a member, or if they become a member and they, um, they're, they're a member for one year, I, I don't think the, mem the Drupal Association, as far as I recall, I, I don't see, I remember recall, recall getting something like a renewal notice to say, hey, your membership is about to expire. And, and I know that, you know, again, other nonprofit organizations will send out those renewal notices at a targeted um, point, you know, three months before you about to expire, one month before you expire. And then the, the whole goal of raising the revenue and continuing to grow the membership, I think, would be to help do a lot of these initiatives that folks have talked about before, helping camps, helping improve D.O. Because from, from my perspective, um, and, and looking over the, the information on association.drupal.org and, and the mission statement and that type of thing, is that uh, some, of the, some of these things, some of these programs are already in place, but um, it just takes people to run them. It takes people to reach out to all of the different camps all around the world to say, hey, we can provide, we can be your fiduciary and we can accept money for you, which makes it a lot easier for camps. Or to say, hey, here's some, here's some marketing materials that you can put on your uh, registration booth at your camp and help market the, the association that way. Um, so I think that is one area where I think the, the association could certainly do more. And the part about doing less, I, I haven't, um, I feel like there's, there's so many other things that the association could be doing. I haven't seen a lot of things that I would say I'd like to see less of. Um, although the one comment I would make is it seems like a lot of the, uh, a lot of the times I see the association or see things associated with the association. It's it's a sponsored message, a sponsored tweet, a sponsored blog post, or a sponsor a sponsored you know keynote introduction. And I wonder if there are other ways that the association can raise some of this um, money and 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 maybe have maybe not have to do less of these, which I'm sure are very lucrative uh, relationships where um, we have we have these different sponsored things. So I'm not going to say we should do less of that. But that is one thing I would ask about. Brilliant. And Jenny, are, are you still with us? I see that you are muted, so you would have to unmute yourself. Aha. Yeah, yeah. maybe it's better. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the, the reason what I want to see more and less, it, it's uh, connected to the same thing because the community is getting more structure and with more structure, is more intimidating to people to approach to the community. So we should make it more accessible to, to people because not everybody does the things the same way. So it would be fine to, to help and support those which would want to get closer but they, they still cannot or they don't know how to do. So it's all about the pros and cons there, about the, the structure and the organization which is getting bigger. Great. Thank you guys. Ah, I think we're on a roll here. Are you ready for the next one? Mm -hmm. here's, here's what we're gonna ask next. Um, from your vantage point uh, right now, and some of you addressed this a little bit, what do you think is the single most important thing for the community to focus on for the Drupal project to succeed? Um, I will not take that. Well, um, for the Drupal project to succeed right now, well, we have a D8 launch coming up at some point, and I think the most important thing is that we get people up to speed what's going on, and that needs a ton of education, which is one of the fears that's been, been going on at this point, and that means uh, a ton of uh, community members out there helping out other community members, and that kind of um, requires us to have some kind of structure 
on on everything that goes out so we can actually just provide you know, people with the right resources so when you do a meetup it's actually going to be hey this is how we're going to get this done that we that we make a plan worldwide of how to how to help people up into speed now i don't think that d8 is going to come out like within a month or two months and especially not with the noise we have right now but it will be a thing so for to make the project move on i do think that's um very very important thing we need to look into um, and that require a whole bunch of structure for the for community based and that's is in my opinion uh, a, a very good chance for the Drupal Association to get even more knitted in with the Drupal community um, so uh, so that's kind of the big thing uh, I see and I will I will fight my little ass off thanks Martin other people want to tackle that Yeah, so Jared Smith, I'll jump in here. Um, you know, I, I, much along the same lines, I think you know, our, our, our biggest challenge in the group community right now is, is keeping up with growth, whether that's you know, keeping, you know, making sure that we have all, all the features and, and, and that, that our end users and, and developers want in a modern CMS, whether it's making sure that the Google developers are able to keep up with the, with the changes in the code, which is you know, particularly applicable if we move to Drupal 8. You know, Making sure that our end users can keep up with the releases of Drupal, and hopefully they don't have a, a too painful experience as they, as they upgrade from one, one version to the next. Whether it's uh, keeping up, you know, making sure that the Drupal development community can keep up with the, with the growth of the community in general, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's making sure that the, that the government and the working groups and those sorts of things, and the Drupal Association itself, can uh, continue to grow and, and at, the, at the rate that it needs to. You know, to make sure that the, whatever governance we set up, you know, grows, grows and doesn't doesn't hinder our growth. Okay. Jared, we lost your audio for a second, so I'm going to go ahead and move on and let let that reconnect for you. Other folks want to answer that question? Uh, yes, this is Pedro, can you still hear me? Yeah. Hi, Pedro. Hi. Um, you know, I, I think um, with Drupal, you know, I think what everybody else said, you know, we do have to keep the developer community updated and where the project is going. But uh, you know, what we've seen with the Drupal 7, we have we had a kind of a snowball effect. White House adopted it, and it went from there. We've uh, gotten more market share. We have a lot more people using Drupal 7 than they use Drupal 6. We want this continue into Drupal 8, of course. So I, I think one of the single most important points to focus on is going to be to meet that demand from the market. The more of the market we take, uh, more resources will be needed, not just for Drupal project, for Drupal community, but for organizations to use Drupal. Um, I recently worked on a, as a consultant on a project for one of the largest uh, government entities in the United States. States and uh, we were putting Drupal versus uh, SharePoint and Drupal beat SharePoint and everything except when it came down to the talent. One of the biggest concerns for this particular agency was for them to be able to staff these positions with Drupal developers because uh, and I'm sure a lot of uh, a lot of you already know that it's hard to find quality developers skilled uh, themers, site builders, and everything because the talent pool is getting smaller and smaller as the market share grows. So I think focusing on growing the community and growing the number of skilled developers, uh, themers, and uh, site builders should be one of the focuses for the association to introduce Drupal to other projects, to introduce uh, basically how well, well, number one, they can find a job in this economy with Drupal alone, which, you know, couldn't happen three, four years ago. But today, if you have Drupal on your resume, you'll get a call from 10 recruiters a day. So I think focusing on pulling people in, creating more resources for the community and for the project should be number one focus, as that will also increase the amount of members we have in the Drupal Association. Thanks, Petra. This is Matthew Saunders. Um, I, I want to echo uh, 
uh, what others have said um, and, and put a little bit of a twist on it. Um, I agree that we need to grow our community um, in order to keep up with demand. The demand just keeps getting um, larger and larger and larger. And this, this is manifest by situations uh, um, like, for example, myself, when I've looked for a job, um, it hasn't taken me much more than a couple of weeks since I, since I uh, entered the Drupal community to find one. And I feel really blessed because of that. Um, but what I've noticed is uh, over the last number of years, it seems like um, when I attended uh, uh, DrupalCon in Barcelona, the average age of a convention goer was somewhere around 26, 27, 28 years old. Um, and there were some people who were a bit older. Um, there were some that, uh, that, uh, that uh, were a bit younger, um, but it seemed like that was about the average. It, at the last uh, DrupalCon that I went to, which was Portland, um, it seems like the average age has, has increased to mm, somewhere around 36, 37, 38 years old. Um, and again, there are some younger and some older and some very obvious younger, younger members in the community, which is cool and awesome. But I do worry about that donut hole between, between um, the up-and-comers and the folks that, uh, that, are, uh, that are, uh, are leading at this point. Um, who are a little bit older. Um, it seems to me like when you're when you're uh, when you're working with older people, you might have uh, a little bit more wisdom, a little bit more experience. But it's the the job of us um, to bring in, attract younger people to the community, and help them help them uh, build themselves up to to positions of of uh, of, uh, of leadership. And it's critical, in my opinion for the sustainability of the project as a whole, for us to engage in those kinds of, uh, those kinds of uh, recruiting activities. Uh, and I don't think that this is just something for the, the DA to do. I think that this is a, this is a, uh, a task that needs to be um, shared amongst every single member of the, the active community. Great, thank you. This is Matthew Tift. And I'll just say that it would seem quite obvious that the, the challenge with the community is not finding good people to run for the board because those are a lot of very good answers. So I, I, I would, um, I guess the, the, the way I would, the way I would phrase it is it seems like uh, dealing with the growth of the community, you could be the single biggest, single biggest challenge. Because then if you say that, then I can say all kinds of other things related to that. With, with Drupal.org and the, the complexity of Drupal core growing with Drupal 8, training people, all of these types of things. I do think that uh, the complexity of Drupal core moving forward is going to become more and more of an issue. And yesterday was obviously a big day in that front with this people finding out about this fork of Drupal. And so I'll be very interested to see how that um, how that pans out. But I think that uh, as the complexity of Drupal core grows, and core development can no longer be something that people can easily just jump in and do, that one of the challenge is certainly going to be finding ways to fund people to work on Drupal core and I, I understand that you know the association their their mission is not to affect the code or not to write the code for that but it seems like uh, one of the things that they could do to help with that issue is to help uh, promote uh, organizations sponsoring developers to work on core or finding some methods there, there have been some innovative ones coming forward recently but finding other methods to help uh, fund the core development because I mean Drupal core is at the core of Drupal and if, if if too many people continue to get burned out and leave and not want to do core development that seems like that could have some pretty serious consequences. Great. And Eugenio, did you have any thoughts? Yeah, um, I agree pretty much with Matthew and I see a problem with the complexity of the core in Drupal 8. Uh, since the code is becoming also more uh, structured and uh, more uh, 
like uh, more clean, let's say. Uh, it's required more developer to be uh, to have knowledge, and this can be more difficult. And also, uh, the community expect to have all the same functionality they had before with Drupal 7 or with the previews. So this can be hard work to to give back all what they had already. Great. Well, let's let's go on that theme for a moment. Um, as Eugenio and Matthew pointed out, it is it is not in the Drupal Association mission to touch the code that belongs to the community, but right. it is yeah. in our mission to help the project succeed. Right. So to help mark help Drupal gain market share and, and make it make it a dominant player in, in the CMS <clears throat> market. So obviously those two are intertwined. Right. You have to have good code to have a product that people are going to want to use. Um, uh, so how, you know, how do you see the Drupal Association helping to create the best possible Drupal product without overstepping our bounds and getting engaged in, in the code itself? I will, I will repeat myself that we need the right tools to get the job done. That means that DDO means needs a ton of love and that we should provide uh, a good entry point as um, has been mentioned before that a hey, people are getting older and more experienced. How do we get new people in? Well, we have a whole, we have the whole user group, you know, Drupal camp, meet up, Drupal cons kind of thing. We have the issue queues, we have the mentoring programs. All of these programs we need to have more uh, more focus on, and the VA should, I think, should use um, way more energy on that. Um, but especially D uh, needs a ton of love, and we can we can see some of the issues right now. If we really want to do forks, we can just get the DA, DA to begin to take decision on the code, and then we'll have all the fun in the world. And that will never, ever, ever happen. But <laughs> that's a whole different discussion. Thanks. And that was Martin for folks who don't know his voice. This is Matthew <laughs> Saunders. Um, you know, the association is a 501c3 under the IRS code, and this speaks to an educational mandate. Um, and uh, to my mind, that really means that uh, that the that the uh, um, work that the DA does around uh, uh, building uh, uh, around uh, raising money and so forth should be should be highly focused on providing uh, providing uh, educational opportunities, uh, uh, engaging in outreach, engaging in uh, in uh, 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 activities that uh, that support uh, people to. Um, learn and insert themselves in the uh, in the uh, 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 in the community, so they can they can be better participants, so they can be better stewards of the code themselves, so they can be better stewards of the resources that we've got. Um, so, I mean, I believe that uh, that the, the the DA really um, has a has a has a mandate around uh, education. Other folks want to jump in there? Uh, this is Eugenio. I think it's uh, to work a lot on branding uh, in order to make people to want to learn and uh, at the same time to, to offer uh, educational service and probably involvement with the university and uh, training, workshop, and uh, all what can support. Great. Pedja or Jared or, or Matthew Tift? Uh, this is Matthew Tift. I guess I would say that um, related to what I had said before about growing the membership, it would seem to me that the association could take a bit more of uh, a role in doing some of the things that other companies right now, well, let's, Acquia for the most part have been doing with trying to grow more core contributors. It seems like that could be the type of activity that the that the Drupal Association could do more of. They, I mean, there, I don't. From what I understand, there's nothing from stopping the association from hosting a code sprint and inviting people that are working on the initiative to lead it, or that uh, when there is a camp or something like that, that perhaps the association, you know, again, if 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 you raise more funds, have more money from members, have more sustaining members, maybe. One of the positions is somebody from the association going to camps where they're speaking about the importance of uh, contributing to the code, where they're 
helping with the registration booth and they're bringing promotional materials for the Drupal Association. And then maybe they're hosting uh, or they're, um, they're helping with the planning for these events, for these camps, for the code sprints. And, and then maybe, you know, again, if, if, if there is the funds available, uh, so, sort of along the lines of some of these um, uh, community funds that I, I think I forgot, that's probably the wrong, the community cultivation grants, helping with uh, the, those sprints and, and, you know, maybe flying in again, the initiative lead or something like that for, for different areas working on the Drupal core. So that, that, that I think is one way, or that's not one, that's a whole bunch of ways that the association could get involved. And from what I understand, those wouldn't be in conflict of its uh, the organization's charge. Great. Jared Opeja? Uh, yeah, I kind of have to say that, you know, the Drupal Association really shouldn't be where they don't get involved with the code, which is a good thing. They should be the kind of a separate third party and instead provide developer developers and project support and work with member organizations to support core and module development. Uh, if you look at, you know, a lot of modules are either sponsored by or maintained by local shops. I think that's a program that can be grown that, you know, certain developers who are who are more and more becoming part of the core, like get either, uh, you know, support from the member organizations or, you know, member organizations support certain modules, whether it's financially or providing other benefits. Uh, you know, I think uh, DA can really help with uh, Drupal education and outreach strategy which will both help grow the membership and grow the market share, which ultimately is what the DA should be doing instead of trying to decide which module should be used and, you know, where the code goes. Uh, the code belongs to the Drupal community, and I think the way we're handling changes now is working really well because everybody gets their voice, voice in instead of a DA or somebody making the final decisions or rulings. Great. And Jared, are you still on the line with us? Oh, I muted you. I forgot about that. Hold please, Jared. Let's try it again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Jared, I think if you unmute yourself now. There oh, we go. There we go. Um, I, I don't have much other to add than, than uh, maybe maybe focus a little bit on the uh, on the working group that uh, have been put in place from a from a governor's perspective over the past year or so. Um, I was involved early on in those discussions about you know what makes sense and, and you know, from a governance perspective and some of the things that I've seen in other open source communities that have worked well and the, and the concept of uh, working groups is something that I that I talked to Drew about. The, more than a year ago, but uh, I want to I want to see that that idea continue and, and make sure that the working groups have the you know have the tools that they need to be able to do their jobs and, and continue to get the focus on uh, on what they're they're working on and get the you know get recognition for the hard work that they are doing. Thanks, Jared. Good. So um, our next question is actually from one of our candidates, but dovetails nicely with something I would have asked anyway, uh, which is about the process of of governance. Um, so one of the exciting things is that all of the candidates come to the table with uh, certain things that you want to see happen at the Drupal Association. Um, and yet the role of the board is not necessarily to step into the operations of the association uh, and determine, you know, every little program move that it makes and, and what, you know, uh, et cetera. So, I think um, I'd be really curious to hear about, you know, what you think you bring uh, to the table uh, as a board member from a governance perspective and where you see that line between governance and operations. In other words, where's the line between board and staff and what do you hope, what do you think you bring to the table as a, as a board member? So um, I'm going to answer, this is Matthew Saunders, I'm going to okay. answer the question, I guess, because um, it seemed like there's some silence there. That was my question. Um, <laughs> yeah. So 
Um, obviously, I've got some thoughts on that. Um, I'll start by talking about what I what I bring to the table, um, and that is uh, um, quite a bit of board experience myself. Uh, I was uh, the board vice president um, and secretary uh, for a uh, uh, educational nonprofit that uh, that uh, uh, that uh, governs uh, a charter school in Colorado. Its budget is roughly the same size as uh, as the Drupal Association's budget. Um, although the although the uh, the specific uh, the specific uh, um, group of people that uh, that that particular nonprofit serves is uh, is rather smaller, still the same kind of uh, governance governance challenges exist, um, regardless of what what uh, you know the uh, the number of constituents that you've got in your in your particular in your particular community. Um, from my standpoint. When I'm looking at uh, when I'm looking at uh, uh, board responsibilities, um, the board is responsible for things like mission, values, goals, organizational health and vi viability, survival of the organization, making sure that the organization has the uh, resources that it needs in order to operate. Um, and then there's this sort of area um, which seems to me to be shared. Um, uh, between the board and uh, between leadership at the uh, at the uh, uh, organization itself, and that's stuff like strategic planning and organizational evaluation, um, looking at uh, that uh, things like finance policies, membership, um, and uh, to a certain extent, employment terms. Although employment sits sit, sits uh, um, um, directly in the executive director's uh, um, lap. And then we've got operational kinds of things which the board should never, ever, ever get involved in because if they if they are, it means that uh, that they, that there's dysfunction in the organization um, in ways that uh, are pretty frightening. That's things like staffing, specific uh, um, uh, management of programs, internal systems, things like that. And it's it 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 uh, it behooves the executive director to ask for advice as needed from board members um, uh, who have expertise in these areas, but um, the, the board should never be making, making, uh, making decisions in this, uh, in this area. Um, so, I mean, from my standpoint, what I think I bring is uh, uh, the, the depth of, uh, of knowledge of, uh, of nonprofits and boards, but also the breadth of, uh, of uh, my involvement in the community over the last six, seven years. Thanks, Matthew. Other folks want to try to tackle that? Uh, Morton here, I can, I can take a stab at it. Well, um, I bring what I would say uh, from a grassroots, grassroots perspective, a ton of experience. I've been doing this since I was 13, I'm 39 now, so that gives me what, take 26 years of organizing and talking and making people move in some way or the other. Um, and of course, well, uh, seven years in the Google community and knowing a ton of people and as, as this is a community uh, chair I think that uh, what I bring here is actually a huge knowledge about the community uh, people basically well, I have an idea of people know who I am and they know they can always come and talk to me shout at me get drunk with me say dumb things to me without me well maybe I get mad but we're gonna, we're gonna make, fix that up later um, and and I have, I have a great I have this whole um, it's great to work with people and figure out what can make this thing go better and how we can think those kind of tactics. Um, I do see it as, uh, and another thing I also bring, by the way, is this whole international perspective that if we want to grow Google International, we need to have people sitting on the board who's not rooted, uh, that's rooted all over the world. Um, and not so much based on what you, uh, it's, it's not a criteria or a plus like that, but it's, it's a thing that I do bring another perspective. It has changed my perspective uh, some, somehow the last year by going so much back and forth to uh, between Europe and, and the States and that's been a very great learning experience. Um, when we look at tactics, uh, I do see that, that um, well, this, the board, uh, we get the, we figure out what, what is it that we need to get done. We put out, um, you know, basically lay out a strategy and then figure out also with the staff actually how we're going to do this. Um, in some way, by being grassroots, uh, it would be hard for a person like me to keep myself away from actually ending up in the wings. Because if I'm out at a camp and I can see people having a need for something, want to have help with something, whatever it is, 
I will have thought oh where's he it's, it's so deep even though I thought that I cannot keep my way from it um, and the thing about kind of leadership uh, is it's also the, and that's kind of the thing I've been shouting off uh, about at least the EA board from last year is the lack of leadership I think we saw like two years ago it was kind of the DA was kind of invincible and always kind of an organization that kind of meddled things up and that's the thing that I've been changed greatly the last year um, which I'm, I'm very happy to see but that also requires that we have people who believe in themselves have a clear vision of what they want to do and is able to roll with the punches when they come because of course they will come um, and again especially in and I guess what we're going to see the next, you know, the next part next year with uh, with that little initiative that came out yesterday, um, and that's that's kind of how how I see. It. I'm I'm way more rooted in the grassroots, so I'm not so much up on rules and what we should do and should not do. Um, uh, maybe I, I kind of like still to just get dirty when that's needed and just you know, roll the punches and get stuff done. Thanks, Martin. This is Matthew Tift. I guess I think the way I understand the board is, I mean, for me, it seems like one of the main uh, responsibilities is regarding fundraising and with um, financial oversight. Um, it, it seems like the the board can do a lot to try and help the Drupal Association staff, um, and specifically. The board seems like a good place where they can kind of, you know, the board members are the ones who are trying to always keep in mind the mission and looking at the what the staff are doing and and essentially asking questions. I think maybe rather not telling them but saying, so how does this program relate to the board's mission or the Drupal Association's mission? How, you know, why are we doing this this way? And sort of asking questions, representing uh, the the members of the association. And maybe it, to me, it seems a little bit, you know, like a politician representing their their people to to ask questions, sort of on on behalf, to be in the room, to be paying attention, to be saying, so what's going on with this? So, like what I mentioned before, like the the fundraising and the membership, and so I guess, you know, I was talking about specific things like choosing a button and that kind of thing, but I think in that particular instance, that's something where you know, I've had a lot of experience with um, in my other roles um, raising money online. So that's not something where I feel like I would, you know, tell a board member what or the staff what to do, but to maybe just ask questions. Have you considered this? This is an area where I've done some work or to maybe offer, um, like Morton was suggesting, you know, that's sometimes where you might want to say, well, you know, I've, I've done A-B testing on this type of thing before and this, you know, this software works and maybe maybe offering to help out I don't know if that is again you know um, cool or not but it seems like there might be certain places where if you are uh, knowledgeable about a particular area to speak up and maybe maybe if it's in the form of a question rather than the form of this is what you people need to do because that definitely does not seem like a good role of a board member more about asking questions about how does the activities connect to the mission, and um, and and how, and, and then also, you know, revising the mission statement as needed, and sort of the strategic planning, looking to the long term, maybe the things that uh, somebody who works at the association, they're they're, you know, they're, when they're doing this day to day, they're not necessarily regularly, other than maybe their you know annual review or something, thinking about what's going to happen five years from now, but that's something that a board member might ask. So how, you know, how, how is this leading us toward our long-term goals, our short-term goals? Thanks, Matthew. This is Jared Smith. I'll, uh, I'll jump in briefly here. Um, you know, some, some, a couple of things I'd bring. Um, one is an outside perspective. I mean, I, like I said earlier, I've been in, involved with uh, open source communities around the world. And, and we're not the only open source community here trying to solve some of the issues we're, uh, we're dealing with. So, so bringing an outside perspective, um, somebody who understands the, the difference between the strategic and the tactical and, and knowing that the vote board really needs to focus on the strategic decisions and, and leave the tactical to, to other folks. And then 
you know, I, I guess the other perspective I bring is that I don't think the best use of my time is to dive into the code and, right now and, and, and start coding modules. I think there's better things I can do at some time. Thanks, Jared. Eugenio or Peja? Hi, uh, this is Peja. Um, with, you know, over 12 years working in various open source um, systems, and as Matthew said, you know, we are the only one, uh, and most open source projects face similar um, problems. Uh, I can, for one, say, you know, Linux and Ubuntu communities have a lot of the similar um, issues. Uh, having worked with a variety of uh, different clients and federal governments, uh, I, I, I really bring to the board the unique insight into the challenges facing those uh, markets. I've worked a lot of with uh, member-driven nonprofits, um, and I, I think what I bring is that unique insight that I've seen member-driven organizations with you know half a million to six million members and how they use, whether it's Drupal or another system, to build that membership. And I'm not saying that I bring the coding level. I bring the strategy and the thinking of how to promote Drupal Association, how to support our mission, uh, how to do fundraising in a way that I've seen all these other larger associations do it. Um, you know, as far as where the difference is between uh, what the board and what the staff do, I mean, I think that's pretty clear. But, uh, you know, as a board member, we're there to support the mission, participate with any of the policies that drive the association. Uh, you know, one of the most important things is, I think, fundraising, as well as new, you know, uh, priorities and new initiatives that we can help with. Great. And Eugenio, I think you are muted. There you go. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think from my experience, as I said, it's three, four years that I'm uh, contributing to Drupal community. But in the last two years, in 2011, I contributed to the organization of uh, Drupal Day Italy, and in 2012, I was the main organizer. And it's a large event with more than 200 people with streaming, and also the streaming it's more than 200 people uh, uh, connected. So I'm uh, quick in getting the things uh, and giving a response. Uh, I, I can see uh, how the community behave and what they need to be involved. So in, in Italy, it's not so easy to have uh, such a large number of attendees. So I, I, could, uh, I could understand what they want and to decide the strategy for, for the people I'm dealing with. OK, thanks. Great. All right, you guys. Um, I have what I think is our final question. Probably we'll see something else comes in. If you guys have more questions out there, feel free to ask them. But this is the last one in our queue today, which is basically, you know, I think it'd be great to share some of your inspiration for, uh, you know, wanting to embark on this journey. So um, I think it'd be great to hear from each of you your favorite moment from the Drupal community um, that maybe inspired you to want to do this and make sure that we create more of them. Well, um, I can say my, my favorite moment is still um, three years ago, I had a daughter that was uh, three months premature and um, the amount of uh, support I got from the community was completely overwhelming. Um, and um, how to put it, about a year and a half ago, I was frustrated beyond belief about the project and where the code was uh, um, going based off I'm a front end developer. And, you know, people who know the front end in Drupal will probably uh, um, at least know my point about I think it's very wrong. I think everything should be done in another way. And a year and a half ago, it didn't seem like we were going that way. And I was kind of a little bit like, do I really want to use my time on this? And um, then you figure out what kind of people it is that is um, in this community. And then you go, okay, I kind of owe it to give it one more chance. And um, so I, th I think that thing had kind of um, that dragged myself back in um, to the community because you know it is it is kind of true when we says you know, come to the code stay for the community um, and that that whole experience of, of seeing how many people were 
there was suddenly aware of my situation and, and uh, you know, kept, kept my spirit up. That was uh, pretty incredible. And that has nothing to do with the code. It's nothing to do with anything but the people. And uh, so I kind of think I kind of owe it to everybody to push you in a harder. And um, that's maybe why I'm this <laughs> still this angry Viking type who cannot cannot slow down. So that's the uh, that's my most remarkable story in this community. My uh, my moment, uh, my favorite moment, sort of spread across a year and a half. And, and can we just um, get you to remind us who you are? Oh, this is Matthew Saunders. Okay, and thanks, um, Martin, for that first one. My my favorite moment kind of spread over a year and a half when quietly in a in a in a back IRC channel um, there was uh, whispering in our local community about how it looks like Denver is going to get DrupalCon. And that started up a, a, uh, uh, an 18 month journey, which at times felt like I had taken on a second job. Um, and at times it felt like a, a second full-time job as um, our community rallied together and, 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 uh, and I think put on a pretty amazing wonderful uh, event and I know that all of our events are wonderful but when you when you participate in the organization of one of these events it's a it's a really it's a really amazing uh, and, and, and fabulous experience and that all culminated on the last day of, uh, of, uh, of the convention when our our team was standing up on 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 the stage and um, it was it was an enormous relief, but also at the same time uh, a little bit of sadness that uh, that uh, that uh, it had uh, come to an end, and a whole lot of pride. And this all comes right back to what Morton just said. It's all about the people. Um, and you know, as I had mentioned earlier in 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 uh, in our conversation. Um, the people in this community have always found their way to supporting me when I needed to be supported. And I feel like I've reciprocated and supported others when they needed uh, to be supported. Some of my deepest and, uh, and most rewarding relationships over the last six years have, have been, have been, have, 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 uh, um, grown from from this this amazing uh, group of group of people, and I truly believe that if Drupal were to disappear tomorrow, those relationships would continue on, and those friendships would uh, would uh, would uh, would not uh, just go away. They they would uh, continue continue to deepen as they have over the last um, over the last six years. Here uh, is Eugenio. Uh, my favorite moment was probably last year in Munich, where uh, uh, for the first time after uh, uh, working on contributed modules, supporting community, and so, uh, I got to know many people that uh, I, I knew on forum or chat, uh, ERC, and uh, even uh, uh, Cheeks uh, came to, to ask for us because we contributed the modules that uh, it was interesting also for him. So uh, it was fine to find that uh, people important for the community also notice uh, us uh, sometime, and this was a bit of a reward. Hey, Hi, Joe. No, this Hi. is Matthew Tift. Great. Hi, Matthew. Hi. I was going to say that there is a lot of favorite moments I could choose from. Uh, one, one that stands out in my mind was last year at uh, Twin Cities Drupal Camp and we we had uh, take decided over the past, I mean we've run the camp for the past three years and I've been involved each year and we've always made it a priority to try and bring people in that can help uh, new contributors that can run sprints and do things like that and in last year we it seemed like we just got lucky in all of these uh, really fantastic uh, Drupal developers showed up at our camp and chicks stayed at my house and I was driving back and forth each day and, and, and learning quite a lot in the car rides 
and but I remember uh, we were we were at a sprint, and um, uh, I, I asked uh, Earl Miles was there as well, and I asked him what are you doing, and he said I can't tell you it's secret, and then I thought oh, okay, and well it turns out that that day was at, at that sprint was when views and Drupal core came about and that Tim Plunkett and XJM and Earl Miles and some other folks were sort of meeting in secret. And then as a result of that, a, a, after all this planning and all in bringing in people from all around the world and that kind of thing. And then, you know, something really big to me that had seemed like a no brainer for so long, putting in views and core was sort of born at Drupal camp twin cities. And that it was really through the, the foresight of the other people on the Twin Cities Drupal camp to make that a, a priority to try and and help grow our community that way by bringing in these other folks leading sprints and, and having other uh, community oriented growing events. Thanks, Matthew. And Petra, are you still with us? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Um... Well, I, I think it's hard to pick a favorite moment um, over, at least with the Drupal community over the past six years, there's been plenty of those. But I have to say some of my favorite moments are uh, either getting to a DrupalCon registration or, a, you know, a camp or, you know, Capital Camp, Bad Camp, any type of Drupal camp or a Drupal meetup, and especially when you're getting there for the first time, you know, or to register. And you just see the amount of people, you know, uh, just everybody getting together. It just showcases the strength of the Drupal project and community. Um, it, it, and it's, you know, it won't go five minutes goes by that you don't see somebody you know or somebody you've actually worked on some code with or chatted on IRC that you kind of said, oh, you know, let's meet up for the first time and hang out. Um, and, um, you know, a couple of months ago I went back uh, to Europe for uh, vacation and I was able to go to three different cities, uh, Sarajevo, Bosnia, Zagreb, Croatia, and Belgrade, Serbia, and I was able to actually meet up with some Drupal folks who, you know, I've met through Drupal.org and through various uh, webinars, so that was a great experience and I think that's one of the really great strengths about Drupal community is that it's, it's very, very close. Um, so I'd say my favorite moments, any kind of Drupal get-togethers. Thank you. Well, all right, you guys, I think we made it through our, our list of questions here. So I just want to say thank you again for taking the time to share with us today, uh, as well as be part of this process. It uh, means a lot to know that there are so many community members out there that want to contribute in this way, and a board contribution certainly is significant. So um, thank you very much for that. And so uh, just as a reminder for everyone out there, our next steps from here, uh, we have a couple more days of the candidate profiles being available at association.drupal.org forward slash nominations. So if you have questions for individual candidates, you can go in and do so, uh, ask those questions. Uh, and candidates, just a reminder to keep checking back uh, for, for new questions on your page. Uh, so we'll keep that going for a couple of days. And then on Sunday, we will be opening up the voting, um, the 15th of September. So uh, look for that announcement on the association homepage, on the Drupal homepage. Um, and basically, uh, everywhere you go, uh, you should be followed by a please vote <laughs> tag uh, starting Sunday on. Um, but, uh, but keep that in mind. Um, and then we will be ratifying the election results on the 22nd of September at the Drupal Association uh, Board Retreat uh, and making the announcements public on, on Wednesday uh, of the following week. So that's our process from here. And again, I just want to thank everyone for taking part. And again, a huge thank you to Staff al Haj. I hope her fingers still work when this is over uh, and that she is able to continue to eat and type. <laughs> so I appreciate everyone's time. I'm going to go ahead and uh, end our recording now, and we'll talk to you all soon.